when Apple first brought Thread to the HomeKit ecosystem with the HomePod Mini, it marked a major shift in how smart home devices connected. Thread promised to improve speed, reliability, and incredibly low power consumption, but only when supported by a healthy, well-structured mess network. Early Matter rollouts revealed just how fragile Thread could be when manufacturers were still learning, and they're still learning today, the nuances of multi-vendor networking. Even today, many Apple users experience accessories showing no response, devices becoming unreachable, or automations not triggering consistently. The good news is, like Wi-Fi, Thread issues are almost resolvable by following a few key adjustments. Over the last few months, I've been having issues myself with devices becoming unresponsive. And after rolling out some of these methods, which I'm gonna take you through in this video, my network has been solid with very few issues compared to before. So first up is rebooting. Restarting your thread border router, whether that's a HomePod mini, the HomePod or the Apple TV 4K, is in my opinion, one of the most effective ways to clear stuck routes and refresh the network. Thread builds a map of all available communication paths and stores them internally. When something goes wrong, this map becomes outdated or corrupted and the system needs a clean slate to rebuild it. To properly restart the mesh, all border routers in the home need to be powered off uh, for at least one minute. Now I did it for about five minutes and I did this by simply turning the power off throughout my entire house. So then it turned off everything that was mains powered, which are border routers. This forces every device from powered routers to all the different sensors that are uh, considered sleepy sensors to rediscover their neighbors and reestablish their links. It is important, however, not to rush this process. Thread sometimes takes up to an hour to fully rebuild and restarting things again midway through this only prolongs the recovery. So let the network settle before making any further changes. The next one up is adding more powered Thread devices. Thread only works as well as the mesh underpinning it. Just like Wi-Fi network that relies on multiple nodes throughout your home, so mains powered thread devices such as smart plugs, in-wall switches, and always powered on bulbs act as routers that relay messages for nearby accessories. If your home only has a few border routers and mostly battery powered sensors, this mesh becomes stretched and brittle, just like Wi-Fi. In Apple home setups, adding a, even a single powered thread plug in the right location, such as the Eve Energy, can dramatically improve reliability in a entire home. When devices frequently fall offline, respond slowly, or behave as though they're just on the edge of connectivity, it usually means there are not enough routing points between them and the HomePod or Apple TV. A strong thread mesh relies on density. The more powered routers you have, the more resilient the network becomes. Next up, is keep your firmware up to date, especially for Fred and Matter devices. One of the biggest and most misunderstood causes of instability in the HomeKit network is outdated firmware. Fred is still a rapidly evolving technology and manufacturers have frequently released updates that improve everything from routing behavior to sleep wake timing. Apple's implementation is particularly strict. If an accessory behaves even slightly outside of Apple's expected standards, the home app may treat it as unreliable or slow. Firmware updates often include improvements to routing logic, better compatibility with HomePods and Apple TV acting as border routers, and fixes the devices that struggle to rejoin the mesh networks after going to sleep. So without these updates, Devices may appear unavailable, respond inconsistently, or depend heavily on being physically close to a border router. So different manufacturers deliver updates in different ways. Some brands use the master distribution compliance ledger, which allows Apple Home to download updates directly without the manufacturer's app. Others still require their own apps for updates, and without checking these apps regularly, it's very easy to miss critical firmware updates if you installed an accessory months ago and haven't opened its companion app since. It may be running old software, which could be causing you problems. It's worth noting that HomePods and Apple TVs 
themselves receive important thread and matter refinements as part of tvOS and OwnPod software updates. An outdated border router can drag the performance of every accessory in the home, so keeping Apple's hardware current is therefore just as important as updating the devices around it. In this video, I just want to introduce you to HomeKit Authority if you're watching a video for the first time. This is an online community dedicated to everything HomeKit and Smart Home. We cover the latest news from Apple's Smart Home platform, honest and detailed reviews, and tutorials that help you get the most out of HomeKit. So while you're here, don't forget to check out the rest of the videos on this channel. And if you like what you've seen, you want to stick around, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also the bell button to be notified when new content lands. You can also follow us on social platforms, including Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for more content at Follow HomeKit. Thank you for support. Let's get back into the video. The next one is about avoid creating gaps in the mesh network. So similar to having a robust network, and you've got various different powered devices which are acting as routers. Thread can only route messages through devices that remain powered and present. When powered thread devices are unplugged, moved, or switched off, the mesh loses one of its connection points. If this device was acting as a router for other accessories that are far away, such as in the garden or, or at far places in the house, the impact can ripple through the network. This is why thread bulbs should not be turned off using wall switches and smart plugs used in thread networks should not be relocated frequently or again turned off or uh, taken out of the socket. Equally, turning a HomePod or Apple TV off every night to save energy is also a common mistake that disrupts the mesh. Every time a routing node disappears, thread has to rebuild its internal pathways which can lead to delays, instability, or devices randomly becoming unreachable. A stable mesh is a consistent mesh, so thread-capable devices should remain in place and powered on at all times. The next one is, I think, one of the most important ones, and it's using Ethernet for Apple border routers. So when using an Apple TV 4K as the border router, connecting to it via an Ethernet cable can provide a notable boost to reliability. Ethernet eliminates the unpredictability of Wi-Fi, ensuring that border routers always remain stable, high quality connection to the rest of the network. This helps Thread maintain consistent backhaul performance, reduces latency and prevents border router role switching, which can otherwise occur when multiple wireless routers compete for active position. So in the OMAP, it's worth checking that the wired Apple TV is designated as the preferred or active hub. Apple system generally manages this automatically, but in some homes, especially those with multiple own pods and Apple TVs, manual selection ensures the most stable border router remains in control. So within the home app, navigate to home settings, hubs and bridges, and active hub. Ensure the wired TV is selected as the active hub. If it's not, you can manually set it as the preferred using this selection tool. The next one is ensuring you have a strong Wi-Fi for wireless HomePods. If your border router is a HomePod mini or HomePod, Wi-Fi quality becomes critical. A HomePod with poor Wi-Fi introduces delays and packet loss, which thread devices experience then a sluggish response or become unavailable. Even if the thread network is strong, a weak wireless link between the HomePod and your home router will create performance bottlenecks. So place HomePods in open spaces away from obstructions and close to your Wi-Fi access point. Next up is wireless interference. Thread operates on the 2.4 spectrum, the same band used by Wi-Fi, Zigbee and Bluetooth. Wi-Fi is the most aggressive user of the frequency and can interfere with Thread if both systems are too close together on the spectrum. Apple's border routers use a thread channel 25, which cannot be changed. So the best strategy is to adjust your Wi-Fi router instead. Setting your Wi-Fi channel to one and disabling automatic channel selection creates the cleanest possible se uh, separation from thread. If you also use Zigbee, for example, with the Philips U, it works best on channel 20 leaving a comfortable buffer between Wi-Fi, Zigbee, and Thread, well-spaced channels dramatically reduce congestion and improve performance across all of the systems. The final one is keeping your IP network simple. Matter and Thread rely on IPv6 and many others to discover and communicate with devices. 
These technologies work best on straightforward, flat home networks. Complex enterprise-style setups with VLANs, strict firewalls, guest networks, and VPN rewriting can block the essential broadcast traffic thread and matter needs to function. Apple designed HomeKit and Apple Home with simple consumer-style networks in mind, keeping everything on the same land, avoiding unnecessary segregation, and ensuring both IP6 and other protocols traffic can flow freely often resolves issues that appear otherwise mysterious. If your network uses pro-grade gear, double check that the multicask and local IPv6 traffic are not being filtered. So my final thoughts, Thread is part of the future of smart home, just like Zigbee and other mesh networks. Its performance, however, depends heavily on how it is built and maintained with updated firmware, stable Apple border routers, a strong selection of powered thread devices, well-spaced Wi-Fi channels and clean home network. Your Apple home can run remarkably consistently. And I found this since implementing some of these strategies. So that's a wrap on this video. Hope you found it useful. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more videos right here and follow us on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Follow Home Kit. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.